The following is an analysis, interpretation, and summary of James Clear's book, Atomic Habits. Chapter 13, Stop Procrastinating Using the Two-Minute Rule. So in the last chapter of Atomic Habits analysis that we went through the law of least effort, we talked about how to achieve more with less, how we can prime our environment around us to make us more likely to perform X, Y habit, right? How do we design an environment that we can optimally win in and be successful in and attain, maintain habits? Now we're going to talk about like something that plagues a lot of people. This idea of procrastination. Like there's this old adage, you're like, yes, the hardest part is starting. And because it requires the most effort, it, you have to overcome the most inertia. Inertia being the resistance to motion from like a physics perspective, but it can also apply from, you know, a, a physical, a, like ugh, just starting. Like that's a lot of what plagues a lot of people. Okay, so how can we unpack this and make it easier using some strategies uh, psychological strategies uh, around that. So, the habits we follow without thinking often determine the choices you make when you are thinking. One more time. The habits we follow without thinking often determine the choices you make when you are thinking. Okay, so it's kind of the unconscious governs the conscious. Habits can be completed in seconds or minutes, but can continue to impact your behavior for hours afterwards. And this we see a lot within like pe the people's food choices, for example, you can succumb to a moment of gluttony or you can choose voluntarily, consciously to uh, indulge in something, drugs, sex, food, entertainment, gaming, whatever. And in the moment, we get feedback. There's a response, but often, it's like that, uh, what is that meme or that Simpsons reference? It's like, that's a problem for future Homer, right? It's like you're not thinking about what future you is going to have to deal with the consequences of the current. Alcohol is probably the most common one. People get caught up in the moment. Everybody knows, almost everybody knows, they drink, they drink a bit too much, hang over the next day. They'll say, I'll never do that again. But the problem is you're judging it based off an extreme heightened uh, state. And that's a hangover, which can feel pretty, it's a big variance between how someone usually feels. And so when you say, I'm never gonna do that again, or like, I can't believe I did that, and you kind of have remorse for your decisions, the problem is, unless you experience that really consistently, and that's like a consistent state, you're probably gonna go back and do that behavior again. Because at some point, very in the future, within the next 24 hours, you're going to come back to a baseline. And so that's not the state you usually feel. And how you usually feel is you made the decision to drink a lot of alcohol based on a the, your homeostatic feeling of just, this is how I feel day to day. Then you get out of that homeostatic feeling by drinking a lot. You can replace this with anything, eating a lot. And then you're like, oh, this is a terrible decision. But the state you're making that thought and feeling in is a heightened exaggerated physio-psychological state that is an outlier. You don't usually feel like this. So you need to make your decision at a homeostatic state, like when you're calm, relaxed, rational, after you've eaten, okay, particularly is really important because we don't make, generally don't make logical, rational, unemotional decisions when we're hungry, really hungry. All of our actions have forthcoming consequences. Uh, are they consequences that add to our cup and are constructive or destructive? We are limited or freed by where our habits lead us, which is why we must master the daily habitual choices we take and make sure they're purposeful and directional to where we want to go and who we want to be. Kind of goes without being said, but we all live contradictions in some way or another. Most people have things they're trying to work on, habits they're trying to mold, break, or remake. So let's start small using the two-minute rule. So what is this two-minute rule? When you start a new habit, a lot of people overwhelm themselves by trying to do a lot. You think you want to, everybody wants to, most people would like to identify with someone who's capable. I'm independent, I'm capable, I can do this. That's a positive trait to associate with. Why would you want to associate with someone who's not capable? You'll have less trust in yourself. You'll be less confident in yourself. And so when they start a new habit, what do they do? Oh, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna train for 90 minutes, 
five days a week. And then on the weekends, I'm just going to do 20 minutes. Sounds good. That's reasonable. That's logical. Do a little less on the weekend, like Monday to Fridays, like where you're going, you know, pretty hard. Okay, cool. Good plan. No, fine plan. It's a fine plan, right? You might want to meditate. I'm going to start meditating 20 minutes every day. I'm going to do breath work 10 minutes every morning. I'm going to hop in the cold shower. I'm going to go three minutes every time I have a shower. It's too much. For most people, it's too much. People try to, they try to do too much at once because they want to feel capable. They want to feel in control. They want to feel like they're better than, they want to feel good. And so what happens usually for most people is they maybe do it once or twice and then they lose it. Or they don't do it at all because the task is too much to begin with. A lot of times in psychotherapy, what therapists will do when trying to change, manipulate behaviors, or even when you administer drugs and supplements and medications, usually start, like the dose makes the poison, but the dose also makes the medicine. And the dose makes the habit here. So the dose we often give is way too high. And the symptoms is we're just not doing it or we're not doing it consistently. So in exchange, let's put our ego to the side and stop trying to feel capable at every single thing and realize that feeling of being capable and trusting yourself and being confident that you can do large tasks will come in time once you do the small task. Because if you're trying to do a large task, hold on, you, you want to exercise for an hour a day? You want to lose 10 kilos? Ha, let's just go half a kilo. Let's see the scale shift downwards on average by 200 grams for the next two weeks. How about that? How about when you start a new habit, it should only take less than two minutes to do. Two minutes. So you have this goal, grandiose, I want to train for an hour a day. I want to read 30 pages a day. Nope. If, if you're somebody who struggles with beginning new habits and procrastinating, right? This is for those types of people. It could be used for anybody. You can scale it to your relative abilities. And it's okay to not, to admit that, I don't have relatively high abilities to start new habits. I'm undisciplined. I'm, I'm lazy. I procrastinate a lot. Why can't we say these things about ourselves? You can. You can admit you're a not a good person and that you have a lot of work to do and you're fractured and you have really kind of sometimes really strange, just destructive thoughts and you're not who you could be. And that's okay to admit that. But it's not okay to just... I don't think it's okay just to accept being okay. Like, we're all fractured in our own ways. Let's aim a little higher towards good so we can be better for ourselves, for our community, for our world around us. So when you start a new habit, less than two minutes to do. One page a day. One page. Then you build trust in yourself because if you start this grandiose 30, 20 pages, 50 pages a day, 30 minutes a day, 10 kilos in three months, and you're the type that procrastinates, like there's no chance to experience the small wins but and, and, and build momentum. But if you just do it less than two minutes, you can tick a box, get a dopamine hit and really affirm that, okay, Maybe it wasn't a lot compared to what I used to do or what someone else is doing, but screw that. I'm building, I'm building a new foundation now. And so I need to accept where I'm at now and build on that and realize that two minutes a day is better than zero minutes a day from your procrastinating ass if you did do nothing because you procrastinated. So you're better off doing two minutes a day than trying to do 20 minutes a day and doing it inconsistently because people try and make things perfect. It's like, I want to make sure I, I like tick all my boxes and I have all the information and I want to do a really, really high standard. And sometimes this shit doesn't get done. So, okay. But then you haven't moved the needle at all if it hasn't get done. So we start with two minutes. Almost any habit can be scaled down to a multiple minute version. You want to breathe? You want to do some meditation? Just take three deep slow controlled breaths when you wake up and before you go to sleep. That's it. Takes about 30 seconds. Cold shower. Just do 
Just do 15 seconds. And the next day, do 20 seconds. And the next day, add another page. And the next day, add another minute. And the aggregation of marginal gains adds up and it compounds. And eventually, week after week, month after month, year after year, what happens is you're doing what you initially had high ambitions and high hopes to do. But because you've built from a reasonable conservative foundation, it has been a lot easier to build up and to get to that point. And in fact, you've been consistent. You've been much more consistent because you've scaled it down and built up from a scaled down version of the habit that you really want to do. And so now you're consistent and you're consistently getting results. And then as you build up, the, the results start to multiply. They don't add up, they multiply. And that is a much more advantageous outcome and position to be in than if you try to do the the end outcome goal, but you did it inconsistently and you procrastinated and you ended up giving up on it entirely. This type of strategy is for those types of people and you have to be honest with yourself. It's okay, like fine. What, you think you're the only one who's procrastinated a habit? You're, you're like, you're not inferior to the rest of the species, the human species uh, and inadequate to the rest of all of us if you've struggled with that because most people have struggled with that. But the beautiful thing is you can get to a point where you're consistent. You can get to a point where that habit that you kind of dream of doing like at a really high level, you can get to that point, but scale it down. We want to lower the barrier for entry to make the habits as easy as possible to start. It's not to say the habit is done after two minutes always. It just acts as the gateway to lead you down to a more productive path. Then the first two minutes becomes the ritual before a larger routine. The more you ritualize the beginning of a process, the more likely it becomes that you can slip into that state of deep focus required to do great things. So the two minutes, you don't have to stop after two minutes, but we're just trying to like, that's how we win. Two minutes. Like, two minutes of push-ups, two minutes of squats, 20, 20 reps. Like, design it however you see fit. But two minutes, like something around that duration to begin with. And guess what? If you're running for two minutes, like, you've already started. Like, you have scaled it down so much to yourself. You're like, okay, I can do, I can walk up the street once, right? Maybe you feel good after that one minute of walking. And like, you know what? I'm going to keep walking a little bit more. And you realize it's not that hard as you thought. And so you relearn that what you initially was really scary and fear-inducing fear and intimidating. Oh, man. That wasn't, as, that wasn't as scary as I thought. Huh. They're not all looking at me. Or like you realize a lot of it's in your head. Like a social situation is like a lot bigger social anxiety. All right. It's fine. It's very common. I've dealt with that when I was younger. So, how about this? You're good in one-on-ones, right? You might be good on one-on-ones, like catching up with a good friend one-on-one. Okay, so let's, how about you just, when a two-on-one comes up, or a three-on-one comes up, like with uh, catching up with people, you leave, get there late and you leave earlier, so you have a short time there, or you get there early and you leave early, so you only have a short time there, and you kind of titrate up. It's like two, three people are hanging out with for a half an hour, and then I hang out with four, five people. And you build up, and you can even initiate it and build up and just like hang out with a couple of friends, and you build up a handful of people. All right, now I'm gonna kind of catch up with like seven, eight people. Um, you put yourself in environments and you slowly build up to where you can eventually get to the group of like 50 people in a room and handle that energy. But if you're socially awkward around a huge group of people, you don't have to begin by speaking to all these people and being around an environment that's so big and intimidating. You can scale it back. The point is not to do one thing, it's to master the art and action of showing up. Showing up, regardless of how you feel, just show up, it doesn't matter how long. Instead of trying to engineer the perfect habit from the start, doing the easy, simple task on a consistent basis, then you build off that. You wanna run a marathon? All right, what is that, 42 Ks? Can we just start with walking like 10,000 steps a day? What about 10 minutes a day? How about we just put on the running shoes and you go for a walk up and down your street once? And this is not, this is not a hyperbole, this is real. Because some people start 100 kilos overweight and they're like, Jesus Christ, 100 kilos? Do you know how heavy that is? Most people can't lift 100 kilos off the floor. I have that to lose off my body. Fuck, screw the 100 kilos. Don't worry about the 100 kilos. 
you need to you need to lose one kilo before you can lose 100 kilos. You need to gain one kilo before you can gain 10 kilos. Yeah, if you muscle mass. So how about you just scale it back? Screw it. Don't worry about all the rest. Just make the win something small. Something meaningful. Like, and small sounds bad. It's not bad. So make it meaningful. Make it affirming. Make it something that you can feel more confident in. To maintain the joy, love, and passion and creativity you experience in a certain habit, consider stopping just before it becomes a hassle. Or what Ernest Hemingway said, stop when you're going good. Some habits you just have to keep going to. I, I kind of have a bit of friction against this one. Like some habits, like, like sorry, like, shit's going to be hard sometimes. Not if, like, you want to, like, you want to, you prioritize a life of joy, happiness, and feeling good. Cool. Well, you're going to have to feel bad a lot of the times too. Because like inducing voluntary suffering and pain and going through hardship builds character and builds the necessary, necessary mental physiological tools to uh, cope with the trials and tribulations of life. So there is utility in continuing to push David Gogan style, Jocko Willing style, when things get really hard. But if something like you have a creative pursuit, like I have uh, Jungle Beats Media, the media company where we reviewed music on YouTube. That became this. It became a hassle and obligation because we were pushing it so hard and making it like like an obligation for ourselves. And so this was this is a useful thing I wish we could have implemented back then because now we don't do it anymore for now. And we don't do it anymore. Some of you may have known me, uh, come up from, from there here. Um, we don't do it anymore because it became a hassle because we lost that, that spark and joy and love. That was the reason we started doing it because then it became like it's all consuming dozen hours a week task and plus so you got to learn when to apply that principle you got to be self-aware to like when do i apply that principle when to push and when to peel it back like a great one is journaling like writing self-reflective writings like uh, i have a friend uh who may be watching this he knows who he is and he he does quite a bit of extensive uh journaling before he sleeps like some 20 30 45 60 minutes he will reflect on his day and like he's, he does it every day for years uh and I got inspired by like hearing him. And it's like that, yeah, generally can be a very great self-reflective tool to build awareness around like your day and like what you're doing. And it's like, uh, I don't know if I can build that into my day. That's a lot of time. And, you know, but we gave the example, scale it back. You just Like you can just do two, three sentences. What does that take? 30, 60 seconds? One minute of something is better than one minute of nothing. It's better to do less than you hoped for than to do nothing at all. And so to finish off, habit shaping. You want to master the first two minutes of the smallest version of the behavior. We're going to finish with this example. Your goal may become an early riser. How do we get there? You can't just look at the day you wake up. You have to look at the day before. You want to be, you've got to be home by 9 p.m. every night. Lights off at 9 p.m. All devices turned off by 9.30. Be in bed by 10 p.m. five out of seven days a week. Wake up at 6 a.m. five to seven days a week. And that's an example of how we can peel back and un, like uncover new habits. That like You need to set up an environment and a situation for yourself so you can be an early riser and condition yourself to perform a new habit that you're not used to. It doesn't just begin before and after, but the day before even, you can set yourself up to win. But the crux of this chapter is if you're someone who procrastinates, if you're someone who just truly struggles to form new habits, someone who does a bit too much and then stops and starts and stops and starts, but has like ambition to like, I, I, I want to do it. I want to create this good habit. I want to mold this, this destructive habit. Two minutes, peel it back. Think about every habit you want. Write them on a piece of paper. Start at one habit at a time. You'll get to the other ones. It's fine. You don't have to do everything at once. In fact, you probably won't be very successful at trying to do your five habits at once. You're probably most likely fail if you're the type of person to procrastinate. Peel it back two minutes. That's it. It's, rep it's repeating myself. It's like, that's it. Stop procrastinating. Two minute rule. Go. Stop watching this. Get out of here.
No, this video is like just the spark. Now it's off, off to you guys to go do the thing. <sighs> Something I gotta think about as well. It's like, where could I be using this two minute rule? See, generally I'm a type of person who like can take on a bit more, but that's the character I've built. I didn't start like this. I came to be like this. This was a process over the last 10 years. You don't start training like shooting baskets at a hoop for five, six hours in a, like consecutively. Yes, I, like, I, I just started like 30, 60 minutes and then it kind of the spark just kept growing and I just like grew, grew an obsession as a teenager. I hope that's valuable. I hope that's valuable. Uh, you guys can listen to all these podcast, all podcast platforms. Um, subscribe on YouTube, just and hit the notification bell, uh, just so you guys can stay apprised. Because I know a lot of people actually have seen the analytics a couple times, a couple times. I've seen the analytics before, and it's surprising how many people watch these videos but don't click subscribe. If you are interested in the further development of your of your psychological, philosophical operating system, your mind, how you interface with the world, then this and, and the podcasts that are associated, Talking Chimps podcast that's associated uh, with me in this channel and that's intellectually stimulating conversations. If I was you, I'd recommend. I recommend staying stay tuned uh, to what I'm putting out to the world um, because a lot of people don't, aren't apprised and don't uh, actually follow. They just watch and get out. So stay tuned to that. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you for watching.